the X top top for wall clock time is a Python tool. Uh, it is um, uh, using DuckDB under the hood for doing this dimensional analysis, just like your dimensional data warehouse would do. And if I just run it like this, run X top, um, you know, let's pick this time range, which is essentially these files. Uh, let's just uh, run it. And this gives you a text UI, right? So it's a, it all starts with wall clock time. You know, where do your trades uh, spend their time at? You know, doing what and why, right? So here we see that, okay, so most of the time spent across all the trades is, you know, sleeping. Let's exclude sleep, right? So let's pretend that this is not important, you know, and now we have running, you know, run queue, uh, disk wait, right? Uh, so let's uh, zoom into disk weights only, right? You see, there is like some Postgres here and Oracle even and so on. Oracle is running in a container, uh, so currently it doesn't show the username yet. Okay, so uh, let's focus on the disk. You know, in you know across the, during this time period, where you know when I see a lot of threads waiting for disk I/O, disks are busy. You know, who waits for and and what? Okay, so and now do the dimensional analysis, right? So uh, I mean this is only a starting point. Well, what if I want to break it down? Okay, if Tamil and Fio is, you know, doing P read system calls, well, let's press G. Let's do a group by further by file name. That, you know, if the file name is known during a system call, then let's print it up. So, and indeed you see the majority of time spent during this 40 minute analysis period uh, is uh, Tanel running something called Fio doing a p-read operation against the file name uh, uh, Olama, you know, some, some machine learning, you know, AI model, right? Okay, so uh, I press L, latency. I can go to IO latency histogram. So, um, and this actually shows you a little um, pseudo gr graph that tells you something about the IO latencies, right? So this is like less than one microsecond would show up here, one microsecond or more, two microseconds more, four, eight, and blah, blah, blah. And here we see like, you know, 32 mi microseconds, uh, milliseconds or more, and therefore the next character is, <laughs> is um, uh, you know, 64 or more, right? So this is just a quick overview. Um, and, you know, you see some disks are faster than other. I mean, some, some IOs seem to be faster than others for some reason. Well, let's not guess. I mean, we know that, okay, it looks like whenever we read the Olama file, uh, you know, we have fairly slow IOs, right? The, you know, the bar chart, you know, uh, histogram, you know, shows it. But whenever Postgres reads its, its data files, apparently, you know, the, you know, most of the IOs uh, are, are faster, right? So, well, we don't have to guess what's going on. Let's also add device name. The block device name underlying the uh, the file, and you see the Postgres data files. The reads are so fast because they are on an NVMe disk. Uh, so that's you know easy. Uh, let's zoom into the Olama. This is like one one terabyte sized file. Now I just press Enter here, or I can just press Space and say okay, include Olama, right? Let's zoom into Olama only, right? And you see. Uh, uh, weirdly, well, not weirdly, you see, this Olama file seems to be residing on two different kinds of disks. And indeed it is. So it's a three, three spinning disks are in an array, um, like a RAID 5 or something, uh, a software RAID 5. But I have a, a SSD-based caching device in front of it, you know, using LVM and them. Um, uh, and you know Linux functionality. So some IOs uh, get satisfied from the LVME uh, NVMe cache, but those that are not in cache, they are in this uh, are read from disk, and therefore they take much longer. Okay. So um, and now I can just uh, delete. Let's say I'm going to delete this device. You see, with a D, uh, and uh, and you see I'm going to also have to. I hit backspace to get rid of the file name something as well. Uh, it's slightly buggy, but um, but hopefully this explains. You see why this there is a single Olama file. You see some IOs. There is a whole island of IOs that take a long time, but there are some IOs that, that take less time, right? And that's not all. 
I press question mark to peek into this, uh, uh, into this, uh, you know, this field, this this line where I was at, right? And you see, indeed, uh, most of the time was spent um, uh, doing IELTS that were, that took, took that much, right? There are there is some time, you know. Com, you know, comparatively spent also on IOS that take like, you know, 180, around 180, uh, 28 microseconds and so on. And there is this like the, sa the same thing uh, in a more granular fashion. And we estimate how many, I mean, I actually based on the samples and the event durations, I estimate how many IOS landed in each bucket in that, in that Ulama file, right? So, you see, if I go one line down and I peek into that bucket, Postgres on NVMe, well, you see, now the uh, latency histogram, you know, it, most of the action is much lower. You know, all the, most of the time is spent on IOS that are much faster, right? You see? Okay. So I, I think I have a bug here. I'm not doing 5 million IOS per second against uh, this device, but, uh, uh, you know, this will be fixed in a week. Okay, so that's IO latency. I have the same for system call latency. Um, so let's uh, let's uh, look into the file name sum. Um, okay, let's get rid of the disk. So I can say let's say let's focus on on sleep. Well, actually, I don't even need sleep. So uh, you see, there is a file name called TCP, right? And uh, so let's say there is a file name called TCP. Let's look into uh, uh, let's zoom into only what. Uh, SSH daemon is doing, I, I just, I'm just pressing enter here, right? Or space, if you want to exclude something. And you see, I have a, um, I have an IO latency histogram as well, right? You know, so I, I, you see, I can type here, I can search for uh, all the, any of the columns available in this dimensional data model of your whole system performance. Right, um, and this is I think uh, this needs some tuning as well. Well, it wasn't that slow, but you see, uh, you know there are apparently, um, you know, uh, SSH daemon is waiting for poll requests, and this you know when when SSH daemon waits for poll over a network or something, this doesn't mean that you have a network problem necessarily. Uh, it, it's um, you know maybe the other side you know that your application server or some api gateway maybe that was just too slow for some reason you know um but if you see these latency differences and you want to zoom into those then uh, then uh, uh, you can again you can just do press uh, uh, press uh, question mark to zoom into this in in a more graphical way um but there is something that i'm going to add extra so uh there are so many columns we that are in there, and what I'm show, not showing to you right now. And there are so many columns that will be there in the future. But you see, when I add extra info right now, then there is you know extra stuff. And you know, for currently the TCP connection or UDP uh, you know uh, endpoints, these are shown up here. Let's um, look into one last thing. So let's um, let's do this. Let me exclude sleep. Now we have only run and disk. So let's uh, lo let's look into only disk weight, you know. So this is like uninterruptible um, sleeps, you know. Usually disk I.O., not always, right? Um, so, and you know, ignore. If, if, if you see these numbers changing weirdly, then that's just a bug, so which I have to fix in the SQL. But I just wanted to show you things first. So let's go further. Okay, let's uh, look into stack traces. So uh, let's uh, add the kernel stack and user stack trace of every thread into this picture, right? And uh, the current function only shows the top function from the stack, you know, if, if one is found. This is similar to wchan column in ps and top output, right? Because that's, it, it's read from stack, you know, like, like I do. Okay, all right, so that's it. So now we have a further breakdown. So file is issuing period system calls, that kind, it's kind of you know understandable that uh, uh, this guy will wait for this guy, right? And now, if I want to drill down deeper, then uh, uh, to see the whole um, stack trace, I can add stack hash and use stack hash here as well. So uh, because th these columns here are just the topmost functions of the stack, but this is. The hash is the entire stack. 
um, or what, whatever I was re uh, able to read from uh, from the from the kernel memory, right? So use that cache. Let me just rearrange it with the left and uh, you know greater than, smaller than, or less than keys. So k stack hash is now here. So uh, use that hash. If I press question mark, you see it shows me the, ha the, the stack trace of the user space part of that thread. Um, so this is the uh, file application code, and uh, and apparently it ran the period system code because we saw see that. And if I press a question mark, uh, not not here, sorry. If I press question mark here, I see uh, we entered the system call, and now we handled, we go through all the file system layers, and now now this is where we ended up, right? So, um, by the way, this stack trace stuff is 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 also achieve, is do, it's done with passive sampling, right? So you don't need uh, to add probes and stuff like that, or trace or slow the, slow others down. So this is totally passive sampling, just like regular top would would be. Uh, 